All right, so now we're going to work on writing expressions in factored form or factoring. So if we want to take an expression from expanded form, to factored form, um, this is called factoring the expression. So the key to factoring an expression is to identify the greatest common factor between all the terms in the expression, and then think of distribution backwards um, this is kind of the key. We know when we distribute, we expand. So if we look at all these expressions, I'm just going to look at the first four here. Um, all the expressions are expanded, right? There, are, There's two terms in the first expression. There's three terms in the second. There's two terms in C, and there's three terms in D. So these are all in expanded form. So I want to write these in factored form. So I have to kind of think about how distribution took common factors and distributed them to each term. So we want to try and think of that backwards. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look for the greatest common factor in all the terms. So the two terms are 5x and 15. Well, there's a common factor of 5. Now, if we think of distribution, the greatest common factor of 5 would be distributed. Now, it's going to be distributed, so I'm going to write this as a multiplication. And it has to be distributed to two terms to get the two terms back. So I kind of think of distribution backwards. Step two is to think of, like I say, distribution backwards. So as long as we're good at distribution, we should be able to think about how we can distribute this 5 to something, and the answer would be 5x. So I would have to multiply the 5 times an x here to get 5x in the first term. The next distribution, if you think I have to distribute here to get 15, so 5 times 3 a positive 3 would get me that 15. And so we're basically just constructing a distribution that gives us that answer. So this is now the expression in factored form, or we can call it factored. So I'm just going to practice that with the next problems. Um, so again, the first thing I'm going to look for in all the terms is a greatest common factor. So the only thing common, there's no numeric factor common because we have a factor of 1 on the last term. But I do see that there's x squared, a factor of x squared that's common. So the greatest common factor, I'm just going to write off here to the left, x squared. And then I know my distribution has to include three terms in order to produce that expanded form. So now just think x squared times something would give me 3x to the fourth. So you know I would have to multiply by a 3x squared. So the first term in my group factor has to be 3x squared. x squared times something here would have to give me a negative 5x cubed. So this middle term must be a negative 5x because that would give me negative 5x cubed. And then finally, the last one, what would I distribute to to get just x squared? So I would have to multiply by something, just positive 1, to get that x squared. So here is my factored form of that expression. Again, you could check it by just distri distributing back. But the key is to just recognize those greatest common factors in the terms, and then just distribute backwards. So let's try C. I got two terms. Um, what's the greatest common factor? So the first thing, the greatest common factor between 24 and 42. 
So 24 has factors of 12 and 4. 4 goes, no, 6. 6 does. So 6 is the common factor. It also has s squared and s cubed, so it has an s squared common factor. And then factors of t, there's one factor of t. So now I know if I take this greatest common factor and distribute to two terms, I would get that expanded form. So 6 times, well, the first term has to be a 4. 6 times 4 is 24. s squared times t. I need to get t squared, so this must be just 4t. And if you look at this distribution, if you distribute, you would get that first term. So what would I have to multiply by to get negative 42? Well, it would have to be negative 7. And then s squared, I would have to multiply to get s cubed by s. And then t is already there. So if I multiplied 6s squared times 6s squared t times negative 7s, I would get 42s cubed t. So again, we can always check this. We can always check by distributing back, but this would be our factored form. Now what happens in D is that there is no, notice there's no greatest common factor. So if I look at all the terms, there's nothing common. So nothing common that we think of, but there's always, there's always a factor of 1 that's common. So this is an expanded form. You notice I have three separate terms, so this is expanded form. How can I write it in factored form if there's no greatest common factor? Well, there is a factor of 1. So in factored form, it would be 1 and then times this whole factor And what would happen if you distributed a 1? You would just get x squared minus x plus 3. So in factored form, you would just group the x squared minus x plus 3 as one factor. And that would be in factored form. So it's kind of like thinking it's prime. Now, a couple more things, just a, a few hints and so, so on. Um, what if the leading coefficient is negative? So if we look at the leading coefficient, the leading coefficient is on the highest degree term. So this is a negative 5. So when we take out the greatest common factor, we want to take out the negative number. So in this case, 5 is common to all the terms. But since it starts with a negative, I want to use in my greatest common factor a negative 5. And there's also a factor of a common. What would I have to distribute to so that I get these three terms back, right? So we just have to be careful with our sign. Um, so if I distribute negative 5a times, I think, or negative 5a times just a squared would give me negative 5a cubed. For the middle term, I would get, to get a positive 10, I need a negative 2a, and then finally negative 5 times negative 20, if I distribute to get this last term, I would have to multiply by a positive 4, and then that's it. So if it starts with a negative, factor that negative out here, and then use that as our factored form. And f, you notice there's no common factors, but it does start with a negative factor. So what we're going to do for my greatest common factor, I'm going to factor out a negative 1. And then what would I have to distribute to? I'd have to take negative 1 times 2x and negative 1 times negative 5, right, to get positive 5. So again, when it starts with a negative, when the leading coefficient is negative, 
factor that out. It'll help later on, and it's just a, a um, something that is useful later on too. And then the last thing, just a quick note, that greatest common factors could also contain binomial factors. These are grouped binomial factors. So if we look at this first expression, it is expanded because there's two terms. Well, the factors in the first term are 2y and this grouped factor of y minus 1. The second term also has a factor, a group factor, that y minus 1. So there is a common factor. Your greatest common factor is going to be this grouped factor of y minus 1. Now again, we want to think about what would I have to distribute this factor to to get the two terms back. Well, y minus 1, this factor, if I distribute to 2y, I'll get that same term back. And if I take y minus 1 and distribute here, I would have to distribute to a positive 7 to get that term back. So again, we're not multiplying. We're actually factoring. So we, we want to make sure we don't distribute. But we can have common binomial factors um, as a greatest common factor. And the last one, we do see common binomial factors here. The two terms are separated. And the common binomial factor is x plus 4. What would I distribute to these two terms to get that? So this whole term, I would have to have 2x times that x plus 4 to generate the first term. And then what would I have to multiply here? And this negative sign, again, is in front. So that's a factor of negative 1. So I would have to distribute to a negative 1 to get this term. So this would be my factored expression. All right, looking for greatest common factors in all the terms, monomial or binomial.